Uh, it is uh, now part of the program to induct uh, Mark E. Schaefer, class of 1975. In the late 1980s, Mark Schaefer, 75, established the leading independent ultrasound testing laboratory in the United States, working with companies that range from startups to multinationals to bring measurement science to medical ultrasound. Over the years, his work has helped advance many medical technologies, including vibrating wires to dissolve blood clots in the legs, ultrasonic scalpels for cataract removal, the most performed surgery in the United States, an ultrasonic helmet to treat stroke patients, an ultrasonic approach to harvest stem cells, a laser ultrasound device that identifies malignant versus benign breast cancer, which is now in clinical trials, an ultrasonic misting device that accelerates wound healing, an ultrasonic liposuction system, an ultrasonic device for treating epilepsy and depression, which is in clinical trials, an ultrasound probe to continuously monitor heart function during surgery and postoperatively, lithotriceptors, which are kidney stone crushers, the most prescribed treatment for kidney stones, and even ultrasonic toothbrushes and hearing aids. Along the way, he has also invented a better way to scan pigs for fat content and a way to automatically size knots in lumber for improved wood utilization in lumber yards. In his most recent entrepreneurial effort, he invented a way to combine ultrasound and light to treat bacterial biofilms, which are responsible for 80% of all chronic infections in humans. This new treatment will have application to acne, uh, atopic dermatitis or eczema, rhinosinusitis, diabetic wounds, and implant infections. His company will soon begin clinical trials, beginning with acne patients. In recognition of his efforts, he has been named a fellow of both the Acoustical Society of America for contributions to ultrasound measurement technology and to the American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine for contributions to ultrasound me measurement technology and for his leadership in standardization and safety concerns for medical ultrasound. He also received the United States Forest Service Chief Award for Technology Transfer for the work in lumber grading. Dr. Schaefer has numerous publications and has been awarded over a dozen federal and state research grants. Currently, he is the holder of 22 patents for products he has developed. He has given an invited lecture at the Royal Society of Medicine in London and spoken at conferences worldwide on the accurate measurement of ultrasound devices for patient safety. Dr. Schaefer has worked with the FDA and other groups to develop procedures, equipment, and standards that keep patients safe during ultrasound examinations and treatments. He has helped develop the basic safety indicators used on all ultrasound imaging equipment worldwide. Most more recently, his PhD work from 1988 has now been adapted as a technique to measure high energy ultrasound therapy devices used to treat cancer. In keeping with the Swickley Academy mission statement, he has done this work as an uncompensated volunteer in the service of a greater good. Dr. Schaefer, would you please come forward? Dr. Schaefer, it is my pleasure on behalf of Swickley Academy and the Alumni Association to induct you into the inaugural Technology and uh, Science and Technology Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. We don't have a video, you get to hear me live. <clears throat> I put my glasses on. I want to thank the selection committee and the school for this honor. I, I'm truly humbled to be here among great friends like Jim Cavalier and some of my classmates and all of you, the current students at Swickley Academy. Last time I was on this stage with this many people was my graduation 40 years ago. That sounds pretty old. Uh, <laughs> I prepared a couple of thoughts regarding STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Our students here and how Swickley Academy helped me get here. Uh, first, I'll translate. Can we start the slide deck? Do I have to do this myself? Okay. Okay, STEM students and SA. Next. Oh, do I have the clicker? Okay. There we go. 
So let me translate uh, some of what that citation said. I'm an entrepreneur, which means I've worked mostly for myself or companies that I've started. And I've used ultrasound, which is sound you can't hear. Now, ultrasound has touched every one of you, literally. When you go home tonight, ask your mom if she had an ultrasound done, and she'll probably say yes. So your first baby picture was an ultrasound scan. Maybe not quite like those, but something like that. So what does ultrasound do? Not only can make these cool pictures, so we can look inside people without cutting them open, we can also do surgery faster and safer with less bleeding, which is a good thing. We can heal wounds and broken bones more quickly. We can treat stroke, epilepsy, and acne. That's what the stuff I'm working on right now. So what do I do? A big part of what I've done, again, is keeping ultrasound safe. I figure out how much ultrasound goes into you or your mom or a patient and then help set limits on what's allowed. So you think of it this way. If ultrasound were a car, I designed the speedometer. And then I went out and found out what the speed limit should be to keep everybody safe. That's basically my claim to fame. And just like our, our last speaker, I love what I do. I enjoy getting in going up and getting to work every day because it's an exciting field. Engineering is a great profession. And I'm so excited to do these kinds of things. Now, as mentioned before, Swickley Academy has lots of other halls of fame. We have sports halls of fame. Let me see if I can advance that. Where we've yelled and cheered for our athletes. We have the arts halls of fame. We've applauded our actors, our dancers, our singers, and artists to make us laugh or cry. We've got our distinguished alumni, we respected our judges, our spokespeople, our astronauts. But now we have the Science and Technology Hall of Fame. What sets that apart? What's different about STEM than athletics or artistry? This is where I started, and Mr. Cavalier and I were joking about this. This is me in 1973 sitting back there. That, hey, they're waving. Um, and that's, that's how I started there and I got to here. So how does one get from there to here? And I didn't have a picture from today, but that's, that's when I, I was a fellow of the Acoustical Society. How did I get here and how did Swickley Academy uh, help? And I think that's a great story. So I can't read my own. Okay. What, is, what does it mean to be a STEM student or someone in STEM? It starts with curiosity. I think our last speaker mentioned that too. Curiosity is the key. That's what sets a scientist or engineer apart. I was always taking things apart. Sometimes I'd even put them together. And on rare, rare occasions, they'd even work after I put them back together. But I was always allowed to try. So that's the core. That's what comes from inside of you if you want to be an engineer or a scientist. But curiosity in a vacuum can lead to frustration, especially at a young age. You can't always find the answers on your own. That's where the teachers in the environment come in, mentors, guidance. In seventh grade, we had an electronics class with Mr. Simmons. In ninth grade, I was pulled out of a history class to run the spotlight for a lower school production at the Edgeworth Club. That started me on my career behind the, behind the spotlights. There was a spring break biology trip to the Outer Banks where we visited Kitty Hawk. There was a computer class that was taught during the May program. Remember the May program many long years ago? That was the Swickley Academy environment that allowed a nurturing, or nurtured a young scientist, a young engineer. But even guidance alone is not enough because you can feel like you're being pushed, like someone steering from the back of the boat. You need something in front of you that you want to sail towards. That's where inspiration comes from. We all need someone to inspire us, whether it's Bill Nye or Neil deGrasse Tyson or Sally Ride or Margaret Hamilton, Google her, or Stephanie Qualick, Google her, great women engineers and scientists, or any one of my distinguished colleagues up here today. For me, it was the electrical engineer on Mission Impossible, the TV show, who was always fiddling with little circuits to make everything work. And of course, there was Scotty on Star Trek. We can't forget about Mr. Scott. But then like any career, it also takes hard work. I'm not going to kid you, it takes effort, it takes a lot, of, uh, ep uh, a lot of hard work on everybody's part. We talked about an all-nighter. My first all-nighter was right here. Steve Regal and Ken Black and I, after class on a Friday, spent 18 hours straight hanging those speakers and wiring them up. Now they've replaced them since, but such a sense of, of accomplishment, well, especially when Dawn came through the, the doors there, uh, the next day, and we had, we had managed to do that before the next show had to go up. So with lots of practice and experience, you develop that feeling of knowing what you're doing. 
Then you get to the best part, that confidence in your ability, in what you know and what you can do. It's called self-efficacy. An important part of self-efficacy is watching others like you accomplish your goals. Yeah, that little picture of the baby, like, yeah, I can do this. That's a great feeling. And that's where, again, that SA community provided the environment for success. Responsibility fosters leadership. By the time I was a senior, I had done dozens of productions. I'd run the spotlight for stars like William Wyndham and Vincent Price. I had 20-some keys to different doors on campus. Literally. Teachers came to me because they needed to get into things. I was, it was kind of, that was fun. I was the campus tech guy. So finally, some guiding thoughts. You've heard of the trial and error process. It works, but only if you're not afraid to try and fail. The background image here are some of the prototypes I built while trying to perfect that ultrasound speedometer I mentioned before. Eventually, I built the world's best, but there are lots of mistakes along the way. Each one of those is a failure. But you learn from each failure. Each one brings you closer to the goal. So here's some quotes that I really think are important, if I can read them. Once we believe in ourselves, we can risk curiosity and wonder. To live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. There's nothing wrong with being wrong if it's a, it's a step to the next level. And this is my favorite. The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. That's what engineering's about, trying, failing, trying again until you get it. So don't fear failure. Don't stop trying and stay curious. Thank you.